All right, so first of all, circles. All right, we didn't really do circles, but they are on most SATs, ASVABs, um, ACTs kind of maybe, uh, stuff like that. And they might be on the SBAC. So uh, I wanted to cover it really quickly. Uh, the whole key to circles is um, the idea, it's almost, it looks a lot, remember the uh, uh, vector formula? Uh, not vector formula, what was I saying? The vertex formula, sorry about that. So it's a lot like the vertex formula, okay? And so it's pretty easy to remember. Um, H and K are the center of the circle, right? The radius is R, of course, right? And so when we talk about this um, graph, we have, um, it's based on the Cartesian coordinates, okay? So then we're, we're just going to go, okay, well, what is H and what is K? And remember, it's minus, so it's really always the opposite sign if, if they're adding, right? Um, in this case, it's minus 1, so H is equal to 1. In this case, it's plus 4, so it's really minus a minus 4. Does that make sense? So in this case, it would be the K would be equal to negative 4. Okay? And so what that means is that 1 and negative 4 would be your center. Okay? And then we're talking about the radius. The radius is... A, is Six, right? But it's not six. It's the r squared is six. So that means square root, square root. So r is equal to the square root of six. If we think about the square root of six, two times two is four. Three times three is nine, right? Um, I used to teach this a little bit. Like you could do this math on your own, where you would be like. Um, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Now this is really 2, right? And this is 3 squared, right? And so how many pieces is it? And it's 6. It's one, 2 pieces out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So the approximate value for this is really two and two fifths, or two point uh, four. Okay, that's an approximate value. Okay, that's just doing math in your head with approximations. Okay, if you put it in your calculator, here's my phone. It's going to be uh, square root. Square root six, two point four four nine. So that's pretty close. Not too bad. Okay. Um, so that's a nice way of finding out uh, radicals in your head. Okay. Um, so, but the idea here is to say, well, it's about two and a half. Just think about it. That's about two and a half, two point four, right? And so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over one, two, and a half, right, in this direction. I'm going to go up one, two, and a half in that direction. I'm going to go down one, two, and a half in that direction. I'm going to go left one, two, and a half in that direction. Then I'm just going to make that circle. And there's the circle. Okay. Alright, cool. That's it. Um, questions on a circle? So the, the, the whole key about the circle is remembering it's a, x squared. The key to a circle is this. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay? That's the key to the circle. Okay? And then you're just moving it H, right or left, horizontal. or K, 
up or down vertical, right? Just like the vertex formula. So can you replace K with V? Uh-huh. Yeah. A and B, if you wanted. They use H and K for that vertex formula. All right. Now, uh, 15 degrees. How would we change this into radians? Who remembers? Don't you multiply it by pi over 180? Yes. So it's just 15 times pi over 180 because pi and 180 are the same thing, right? Okay. Um, and so that's really 15 pi over 180. And if we want to think about what goes into 15 and 180, 15, how many times? 12, good job. Good right? Work. Is that right? I think, I, I think I that's right. Because 15, 15 is 300. So 15, how would 15? No, you're right. That's, that should be right, right? Yeah. Because 10 times 15 is 150, plus two 15s, which is 30, which would be 180. Okay? All right. Um, another way to think about that, too, is how many 15s are there in a pi, right? Remember, um, when we think about it like this, right? You can think of it as 12. 15 goes into 180 12 times, right? And you're like, no, please don't think of it like that. But that's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And so there's actually going to be uh, only one of these pieces, right, in 15 degrees. Just one piece. So that would be 15 degrees. Does that make sense? Kind of maybe better this time? Better than the last one. Better than the last one. I like it. Okay, so that's six pieces, and then there'd be, of course, six, one, two, three, four, five, six in the other piece. They're all perfectly equal because I'm an awesome artist. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Now, if I want to change to degrees, how do I do that? Come on. All right. We got 47 pi over 18. Come on, somebody. Give it a good guess. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Because you're still saying that 180 and pi are the same thing, but in this case, I want to get rid of the pi. Right? Eat that pi. Eat that pi. Your voice is squeaking like a 13-year-old. Boom. <laughs> right? Now, what else goes into 180 and 18? 18. Yeah, 18. How many times? 10. 10, so it's 47 times 10 over, well, 1, right? So what is 47 times 10? 470. 470. So it's 470 degrees. Another way of thinking that is we break this pie up into 18 pieces. That means this has 9 pieces, and this has 9 pieces, and this has 9 pieces and 9 pieces. And we go around one time, but what's four times nine? Nine, thirty-six. Thirty-six. So it's, um, but we wanted how much? Forty-seven. So thirty-six from forty-seven gives me. Forty-six from thirty-seven gives you nine. Eleven. Other direction, right? So eleven. So that means we're going up nine more. Plus one, so we're one more into this realm, right? So think about what that is as far as the uh, reference. I know we didn't ask this, but what's the reference angle to that 47 over pi? And it would be 8 pi over uh, 18. So anyways, so the, the, that's kind of another way of looking at it, right? So 9, 9, 9, 9. Right? Nine, 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 and then another nine. Right? Nine, 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 one. And that would be 47. Right? Nine times, wait a minute. Nine times five. 
It's 45. It has to be two. Yeah, because it would be 45. So that would be two pieces. <laughs> Somehow we did our math wrong. You did your math wrong. That's true. Four times nine is 36, though, right? Uh -huh. Yes. And then you said 11, and then you said we go 1 after 9. I was so Oh, awesome. yeah, because 9 to 11 is 2. Dumb. Dumb. All right, so, but it's good that we see the, the picture, because really it should be 5 nines, right, which is 45, plus 2 more. So then what is our uh, reference angle? 7. Yeah, 7 pi over 9. So those are uh, really good ways of, of looking at this. We still have time? Still recording? Okay. So now we want to take the derivative. Do, who remembers how to do the derivative? Well, I mean, I work. Yeah. It is there. She's up there. Alyssa, do you remember the derivative? No. Sarah, what? can you remember the derivative? Have you been taught the derivative? Okay. Can you remember Rosa. the derivative? Ask Rosa. Rosa? I remember you talking about the derivative. Does that count? Sure. I don't remember. I'm going to take well, it out. Remember All right, here we go. This is how you find the derivative. You take the exponent. You multiply it by the coefficient. And you take one away from the exponent. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. <laughs> no, I knew it. Yeah. Right? So what's two times negative one? Negative two. Negative two. Negative you. What's one from two? One. One. Yay. <laughs> I thought it was so bad. What's one times one? Oh. You're messing up. One times one? One. One. <laughs> Very good. I know. What's one take away one? Zero. Zero. Okay? Two. Now, and that's where this comes up. Because really this is x to the zero, right? And really this was x to the zero. So then what is zero times five? Zero. zero. That's what she, that's what that's and called. that's why that goes away. I didn't know that was called the derivative. I just kind of did it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now here's fun. Here's what they, here's how they want you to write it. They want you to write it like this. And remember how I wrote it? Well, probably not since you didn't remember the derivative. But um, I go y prime, right, is equal to it. Now, the way that the book wants you to write it is dy dx. Um, now, I'm going to tell you something. This is beautiful here. dy dx. All that is, do you remember this? Delta y over delta x. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They mean the same thing. D stands for delta. Right? And then Dan. Okay. In other words. So, but delta in this case, right? So this is really just the slope for us, right? We think about it as a slope. Delta y over delta x is the slope. Well, the slope is the in instantaneous change of a linear equation, right? Um, that's what's happening. We are getting to that point of calculus where we're going to be starting to talk about instantaneous change. But um, that's it. That's delta y over delta x. That's all it is. Simple. Hey, we made it.